All right, everybody, welcome in, and good afternoon to you. Happy Monday. It is uh, April the 25th already. My God, Keith, April the 25th. We're almost to May, which in Indiana is a huge month because of the race and uh, pomp and circumstance that the Indianapolis 500 bring. You're not here to talk about that, though, here on Stick and Hack Reacts. This is Stick and Hack On Air, part of the Inside Network, powered by iHeartRadio. And Keith, uh, we had a, a, a fun weekend uh, of golf in the Midwest. Finally, it was 80 degrees. People were out playing, which is what we've been waiting for for five months. I was in a gym, per usual, and not lifting weights, but watching volleyball <laughs> because I'm a good father and I love my kids. I knew that. Uh, right. Knew and that. Uh, the, uh, however, in the LPGA, they were rock and rolling. PGA had a really cool match play or a, a team event that was happening over the weekend. Yes. And then we have some other surprises. Rapid fire. He's Keith Stewart from ESPN Radio. I'm Adam Grover from Stick and Hack. Let's get to it. The Dio Implant LA Open on the West Coast uh, was won for the LPGA, was won by Nasa Hadaoka. And uh, Keith, for, for your, your money, uh, that was who was, I guess, one of her, one of her, uh, staple wins here so far in the LPGA was this tournament. Oh, no doubt about it. And she played great. I mean, she won by five. Uh, Eagle on the closing holes yesterday, Sunday night. You know, they're three hours behind. We got a little LPGA in prime time, which was nice. They were outside the men's coverage, so I got to see tons of it. Loved it. Hannah Green came in second. Minji Lee in third. Um, really cool thing. The number one player in the world, Jin Young Ko. I say cool because it's like, you're going to love this, right? No, it's cool. I okay. already know where you're going, and it's right. cool. On Saturday, she is just a couple shots off the lead behind Nasa. And on the 17th hole, there's a Barranca. And I really just wanted to say Barranca, but there's a Barranca. And she hits it in there, and there's a cement wall in front of her. And she climbs down in like a la Vandeveld, right? Mm -hmm. And she's the number one player in the world. And even the announcers are like, I know she's the number one player in the world, but how's this going to work, right? And she hits the cement wall. And she goes back in again thinking, you know, I'm the number one player in the world. And she hits the cement wall again. She ends up making an eight and she fell out of relevance. But I was totally thinking of you Saturday night because I knew that, you know, I was like, this is something that if I was playing golf with Adam, he would try. And I, I would have I gone at it a third time. <laughs> of course you would. What? But you wouldn't have been you wouldn't have been like two shots off the lead at the time. So, it, I mean, yeah. everything's relative. Well, you, you're you're exactly right on that. Uh, the Dio Implant L.A. Open. Uh, that that event has become the really kind of this this West Coast swing. Now they just come from Hawaii. Now they got a couple of weeks in in California. This event though, uh, and the course itself looked really cool. Th this is one of those. Oh, yeah. If you don't if you don't know it right, and you and you're not following the LPGA, and you just kind of click on, uh, like I did over the weekend, you're like, oh whoa, where where are they? Wh what what is this course? And and how do I how do I play it? All right, so it's Wilshire Country Club. You're st you're set in like right in the middle of Hollywood, you right. know, so you could look up on any hole and you could see the Hollywood letters up on the hill. You're, you're right there below the Griffith Observatory. I mean, you're in the, all these cool LA spots. So it's a very Hollywood thing. And the LPGA has done something cool and very smart. We know they're a very global tour and they tend to travel a lot. So if we're throwing out reactions today, the Dio LA, the Dio Implant LA Open, right? Sounded like me back. there for a second. You sounded like me, oh. Keith. Oh no, what's happening? I've got a lot on my mind today with the 25th. I mean, Adam, I, I can't believe you bring up the Indy 500 as right. if that's a big deal in May, and you it don't is. bring up the Stick and Hack Challenge, which is happening in May, you know, in we just have, a couple of have, weeks. We have another major coming up. We have the Stick and Hack Challenge coming up. I know. We have the Indianapolis 500. We have a huge 30 days of, uh, of awesome stuff, Keith. But so I digress. Yeah. The ladies do. who are normally traveling all over the world, Shanghai, Thailand, Rancho Mirage, California, all these random places, right? They're spending two weeks in LA. The marketing team's done an unbelievable job. You can buy tickets. They last for both weeks. I mean, oh, all sorts cool. of cool things. They have a star-studded field last week. They're going to have another one next week. They really had a Wilshire Country Club, classic design, really, really neat spot. You can see the ladies struggling at times, but then also making eagles at times. I mean, NASA played great. I mean, she obviously won by five, but she made 23 birdies and an eagle, but she only shot 15 under. So you could tell that there were some challenges out there. there. There were some pitfalls. There were some barrancas that could get you. I thought overall it was a great event, and, I, and I'm looking forward to a, another inaugural event next week, the Palace Verdes Championship that they're starting. And um, I think that the two weeks in a row in the same spot is a very, very interesting experiment that I can't wait to react to next week. In uh, unrelated news, I cooked some barranca on my flat-top grill over the weekend. 
So that's pretty good. Uh, moving on to the Zurich Classic. This is reaction number two in New Orleans, a course that I've actually played, Keith. Uh, the Zurich right. Classic, which is a team event, which everyone talks all the time about. Oh, I wish we had more team events. I wish we had more team events. Look how cool it is. This was cool. Uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly, but I don't think it still has that same fervor and excitement that that most some of the tournaments do, especially some of the team tournaments have in the past. Why? First of all, your reaction to that question. Why is that? And then second, let's talk about your boy Xander and uh, Patrick Cantlay, uh, all both uh, winning as a team in dramatic fashion, wire to wire, records galore. They shot 75 under for the weekend. They they couldn't stop making eagles and birdies. Uh, I don't think they, they even had a par for 72 straight holes. Any of those facts right, Keith? Not so fast, my hack friend. Okay, <laughs> They did not shoot 75 under for the weekend. Now, they shot 59 on Thursday, and they shot 60 on Saturday. But in between that, they have to play alternate shot which those two are very good at, and they shoot right around even par. So on Sunday, there was a lot of drama. Even though they had a lead, at one point with seven holes to go, they only had a one-shot lead over uh, Billy Ho and Sam Burns. So there was there was a pretty decent amount of drama, whereas if it was just four days straight of better ball of partners, you know, yes, you're right. They would have shot 75 under at the rate yeah. that they were going. You know, it would have been so, like a would have been like a member member net tournament where where people are coming in with those crazy scores. Now they don't get shots no. here. They're not taking 80 percent of their handicap on this weekend. This is no. straight golf. Uh, how impressive was that? Was that opening round 59? And how impressive was it to hold that lead? Or was it a foregone conclusion uh, starting Saturday morning? Well, you know, I don't think it was a foregone conclusion because there's a lot of volatility and alternate shot. So for Canley and Shoffley, and I've talked a lot about this all year, the top 10 guys on December 31st, 2021, none of them had won. The top 10 in the world ranking. All right, these are the first two to do it. And they did it in this event. And I, I think it's kind of cool. They did it in wire-to-wire -wire fashion. A lot of people weren't talking about them. Cantley had lost two playoffs already this year. Xander hadn't won in 1,204 days. I mean, they were like, you know, last year he won the gold medal, but people were like, well, that's that wasn't a full field event. You know, Xander can't win. I mean, he's got like nine top tens in five years in majors, but he can't win, you know. So I think it was very interesting to have these guys break through. Xander gets his fifth win. Patrick gets his seventh win. They're ranked sixth and twelfth, respectively, in the world. You know, I think that this was kind of a big deal to kind of break through that maybe the John Roms and the DJs of the world see this and they're like, you know what, we got we can win again. So yeah. I'm DJ got married over the weekend. He had other other thoughts in his mind. He didn't give a a, a rat's ass about the Zurich Invitational. He was getting Wait, married. DJ has thoughts on his mind. <laughs> okay. Anyway, getting back to this, I liked the choice of the word that you used, which was impressive. Right. I do think it was impressive. I, I do think there were some really good teams in this field. I also think there were some young upstarts that can just make a ton of birdies. Uh, I think the event overall, you know, you asked like, you know, how does this event, is it really hitting its stride? Well, it's five years into this team format. They switched the alternate shot to Sunday, you know, to Friday, Sunday. So that's made a big difference when it comes down the stretch. There's a little more drama there. And, you know, of course they have walk-up music. I mean, so well, I know what we, go wrong? we featured it over the weekend, the walk up music on stickingact.com, uh, asking what people's walk up music uh, would be. In fact, I think we asked you, sir, uh, on Twitter what your walk up would be. And I, I don't know if you even responded to it. I think perhaps you you went uh, pass on on that request from sticking. No, I, I, I actually did answer it. Oh. And um, I didn't read it. But thanks for paying attention. <laughs> I don't, don't read I our own social it. media. You know. <laughs> why, why would I? You talked a second ago about Patrick Cant Cantlay losing. Um, a couple times here recently in the in the playoffs, and now he he broke through and got got the win. But uh, I, I don't want to to really belabor the fact that he was second because second is still that's still good. Yeah, he lost in playoff, but in in and not on his own doing. It just happened to be he ran into a couple a uh, couple tough holes. He was hey. second. Second still good. Uh, you know what? Um, in some respects, yes. In some respects, no. This weekend, read the line. I had a unique thing happen to me. Um, I picked a team of Burns and Horschel, who came in second. Mm -hmm. And in the ladies' event, I picked uh, Hannah Green, who came in second. I also picked Minji Lee, and she came in third. So um, I'm going to go with the Tiger sentiment. Second sucks because mm -hmm. we're trying to win these things. But right, right. at the end of the day, I'm sure you're getting to a point. So I'm sorry for interrupting you. Go ahead. No, I'm not getting to a point. No, not at all. Why would I bring it a point? Speaking of second place. All right. <laughs> Come on, what do you got? 
Over the weekend, uh, the 30 ESPN launched their 30 for 30 special oh, yeah. on Greg Norman called Shark. Now, if you have not seen it, uh, I'm not going to spoil it uh, for you because there's really nothing to spoil. You know his story. However, the the show itself, the 30 for 30s, always are, are un- incredible. But this one specifically, uh, I really, really enjoyed. Now, I'm going to ask for your reaction. And then I, I have a feeling there might be some sort of debate on the horizon. Uh, your feeling, your reaction, sir, to the show Shark with uh, on the ESPN 30 for 30 about Greg Norman. You know, I loved it. I liked it a lot. Jason Hare, who was the director, he did the Fab Five 30 for 30. He also did The Last Dance. So when I saw that he was doing this and, and that project started about a year ago and they put it together, all the filming and everything, I was like, man, this thing is going to be really good. Now, unbeknownst to me, the shark was going to take on live uh, live golf investments and all of this that goes along with it. So to me, as well done as it was, I had a really tough time keeping that other you know kind of narrative out of my mind. I'm like, here's this guy that's like being totally confrontational to the PGA Tour, and then at the same time, he's trying to like almost break down in front of the camera and having this very difficult, reminiscent moment. You know, I mean. I mean, it'd be tough if I had a car accident on a corner. It'd be tough for me to go back and stand there and look at it, like what happened. All right. So, I mean, at the end of the day, Keith, this was uh, this is two thumbs up for both of us uh, as far as the special. Now, thumbs up for your boy Greg Norman. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not that. But I think we're both in agreement that this thirty for thirty. Do yourself a favor and block out ninety minutes because it's gonna you'll you'll burn right through it. Awesome. It was great. It was really good, and I think to a younger generation of golf fan, I'm just so happy that they get to see these stories and how they played out, because there was a lot of great drama back then. There just wasn't the media to cover it, and people love it. It was really good. All right, uh, speaking of uh, media coverage and people really loving it, let's uh, slowly go down to the match. So the match is the uh, is what the sixth match or fifth match here um, that Six. is... is- Prime for or made for TV special of uh, now apparently just NFL superstars that are playing in this damn thing. Athletes, we've we've taken out professional golf altogether, and we've just said, okay, great, uh, let's play the match here with uh, football players. Uh, I'm going to give you a pre-reaction, <laughs> thumbs down for me. I want golfers. What are we even doing? What are we talking about here? Well, we didn't really take out professional golf. We took out Phil. So this is what we have left. Right. And, you know, the formula hasn't worked for about four of these matches, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm with you. I mean, I'm not going to make the sound effects, but it's definitely two big thumbs down. It's awful. Uh, let's start with, well, we can, we're going to use a man-made golf course on in Las Vegas that really has no character. Um, we're going to use four people that really have no connection to the golf industry that no one in golf is really interested in watching play, nor how are they going to carry the conversation? I mean, do they have to like fly in Peyton to do all the commentary? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's, um, I, I feel like they're totally missing the boat. You know, when it comes to what, what makes golf great is the reality of it all. And the heartbreak and the drama that takes place. I mean, if you want to do one of these right, get men and women involved that are playing golf for a living. So they don't have to be like straight mini tour people. It could be Corn Ferry. It could be Symmetra Tour. Let them play for 200 grand. Doesn't even have to be a million dollars. All right. That would change their lives. And you want to see some drama and you want to see some people miss some putts. You want to see some people hit shots that are uncharacteristic of professionals. Put that kind of money on the line and those people out in front of everybody on a classic golf course and you would see, you know, just an unbelievable theater. I mean, that's that's what they got to do. I mean, this this thing that they're doing here is just, I don't know, it's, it's annoying. It's hokey. It's hokey and it doesn't, it, it I, I I don't, I, that thing could be at my, at my own club and I'm not positive I'd go watch it. And the other thing is, is that the, and you're right, the, the commentary and the, they don't really care if they, if they mess up a chip, they miss a, miss a five footer. What does it, what does it matter? It doesn't matter even a little bit. You got Barkley barking at you in your ear and making fun of it. And that's fun. Okay. But the, what started as Phil versus Tiger is now turned into this, this entirely other thing. And, and this worldwide of this wide world of golf thing that they did in the seventies is what it feels like with, with celebrities and Bing Crosby might as well get Bing Crosby out there. What the hell are we doing? Um, I say thumbs down. I won't watch it. I'm out. Um, and we move on. Um, hey, speaking of out, I, I wrote, before yeah. you get out, I got a bonus react for you. Yeah. I know we're running short on time. Yeah. DJ and Pauline's wedding this past weekend. Thumbs right. up, thumbs down. 
Thumbs up, 100%. I think it's a match made in heaven. There isn't anything. I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting emotional just even thinking about it, talking about the their love and their, and their, their I don't care one bit, Keith. You know that, and I know that. Okay, Dude, doesn't, you know it doesn't they, affect my life even a little bit. Did you know they got engaged in 2013? Right, right. They got engaged. It's like it's like uh, Pam from The Office, and uh, what's his name? Not Jim. The other one. They were engaged forever. Never got married. They have, they have been. Kids. They have. I have had kids uh, get into schools and into high school and and get licenses in the time that time frame that they've been engaged. You and We're I met. And I, started, I, I started thinking hack. True. True. I'm upset now. Now you've upset me, Keith. All okay? right. What do you got? Your bonus react has upset me because it's it's, <laughs> and I don't know why, but it has. It's Monday. It's lunchtime. Uh, take take care of everybody, and uh, good luck to you. We'll see you next Monday. Uh, more reactions with Keith and Adam. Uh, this is the the only show that you should be listening to every single week, and hopefully you are. If you're not, tell your, if you are, tell your friends to get on board. Right, Keith? Hey, how can you enjoy lunch on a Monday without some grub? Very clever. Take care, everybody.